Hello everyone, Zox here, and today we are here with U10. In the mini expansion, U10 has got Raving Vampire, and she's actually a really really good card, helping you like banish three. At least, I mean, if Spider is still in your deck, Raving Vampire basically gets rid of three cards from your deck for the price of one play point, and that can accelerate your quest very very fast, and even allow you to get sometimes get turn fire U10 very easily. I mean, I guess the deck is still a little bit high roll in uh, nature, but personally, I had quite a lot of success with it. If you don't know what U10 is, basically, you want to get to under 10 cards, so cards like Mjolnab, Demon Butcher actually becomes active and she becomes a very strong Storm follower. And of course, now that we can get Spider more consistently, Spider is an alternate way to like sort of win the game if you don't find Nuck on time. Well, that's only if you don't find Nug on time. If you find Nug on time, uh, Spider is dead weight. But it's at least Spider now has some use use cases instead of just being a Spider. Well, like the one that I tried in pre mini, but this is post mini now. And this time we have over ten win rate instead of under ten. So here's a QR code. If you're new to the channel or new to Shadowverse in general, do leave a like, leave a subscribe, and without further ado, let's get right onto the gameplay. So going to this game, this is one of those games where you, you're you just unintentionally playing your uh, own win condition and then the stars align. And as sometimes as a content creator, you just have to go for it. But anyway, let's talk about uh, my card choices, which I didn't really talk about in the deck introduction. But here I kept this hand because I saw Spider in... I mean, Spider is actually pretty decent and we have two other banishers in play uh, in hand which are really neat. But one of the key cards that you might want to pay attention to is that we have Case Crack and Hypodemic Devil. It's not necessary to run both of them but I just decided to play it because like since we can, why not? Of course, Roots of Iolon first to draw a card and then I play Gasping Spider to banish cards. Uh, there's some tech you need to understand with Grassin Spider. If you play on turn 3, it pops on turn 6. Play on turn 2, it pops on turn 5. So depending on how aggressive your opponent is, uh, you need to like sort of count the number of turns you want to get this active. And here I managed to draw another spider which is very interesting. Like it's that's very nice and I think I managed to find another Milna as well. But my choice here is very odd. I decided to go for another spider play instead of getting rid of the Kiri. Some of you may have dis uh, disagreed with me, but since I got two spiders in a row, I really, really want to try to get that combo off. Like, come on. Just imagine if I can find myself a third spider. Like, just, just think about it for a minute. But of course, this means I get very low on hit points, which, you know, it, it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes, okay? All for the sake of content. And I did draw Nuck as well. But more important, I got Drew Raving Vampire. And it did manage to get me my third spider. I'm, I'm surprised my spiders haven't all been banished already. But this gave me the perfect 1, 2, 3 uh, spider counter for one turn. And my opponent played Gale Side, which honestly is a misplay here. They should have just passed and not do anything. And they have a higher chance of winning. But because they did, they didn't they didn't know what spider do. They just don't know. And because of that, I can do this insane play of passing turn 6, passing turn 7. Uh I mean not really passing because I evolved that I have evolved points. Play Muna but not play the trade. Pass turn turn They had to pass their turn 8. And I can pass my turn 8 as well. And play a 5 cost Muna just to rub it in. Well, I could th theoretically end the game this turn with Case Crack, but like... Do I need to? <laughs> Case Crack this turn, turn 9, and go face with 3 spiders for little. This... Is peak. Peak content game. Well, of course the last game was a content game, and you're unlikely to get like 3 spiders in one game. Every single game since, well, you are killing your deck by banishing a lot of the useless cards and unfortunately, Grasping Spider is one of them. But, well, that's beside, look at this amazing start hand, like two one drops and a two drop. 
And, and the 2-drop is Nark. Nark is so amazingly good for U10, right? It's just, it's just good. Especially with her leader in fact, although now that we have Grasping Spider, it's like it's really a situation where it's one or the other. If you play Nark, Grasping, by, Grasping Spider is not going to be as good. And if you play Grasping Spider, you can't really abuse Nark's effect anymore. Otherwise, you're more than likely to uh, deck out. Since Nark doesn't turn off her own engine. But yes, that's beside the point. Uh, my opponent here is playing, I believe, is Chrono Shadow. So, this is a very odd matchup in the case where I kinda have no idea what the timing for Grasping Spider actually is. So I just drop it on turn 3 so you will hit a you hit the turn 6 board. Whether that will be useful or not will be questionable. But there is what we one, th one thing that we will know that is gonna happen is that I'm gonna be permanently stuck on turn 4 going forward. But thankfully a lot of my cards are very cheap. In fact, Nark's own leader effect is a passive damage effect, so I don't even have to worry about that any further. Good. Another good thing is that, let's see, who was it? Raving Vampire is actually now a one drop for the world going forward, so that will make it a lot easier to like fit slot it into our into our curves and plays. So yes, that's that's def that definitely that benefit to Raving uh, Vampire as well, and also she. Helps you control your hand size, especially if you have too many. So as expected, it is Chronos, and especially because it's Chronos, uh, going forward we're gonna have to be a lot more careful. We have to make sure we can kill them for for mana. I'm like I'm basically saying I won't get a single uh play point going forward. And as you can see, this is why having one play point banished. 3 or even banish 2 is amazing. The fact I can get 3 of this because I got Grasping Spider makes this so much more incredible. <laughs> and because I got Grasping Spider again, it actually got me to under 10, which and I should have, I very well should have just played Muna this turn. Like just send it in. There's, there's actually no problems with me doing so whatsoever. But I didn't. No, no good reason other than the fact that I just decided to hold for the other other Milnuts, just in case, but not like it matters anyways because, oh wait, guess what, it's, it's our turn 4, it's our turn 4 once again, 4 mana, lock their board, these two can't trade anymore, and it's, it's actually just straight up Nito. did it change anything, who knows, but definitely, it, ma it made Nito a little bit easier, I guess, for U10, this is technically turn 6 right, Oh, it is turn 6. Yeah, exactly. This, this Actually, that makes it a lot better. <laughs> turn 6 lethal for U10. Well, as you can see, clay point restricting U10 is not going to be as effective as before. After Was it ever effective in the first place? Well, not that I remember since I don't believe I was playing... Uh, I was I, I faced many Chrono Shadows, but that was just a one time. But Raving... I feel like Raving Vampire was such a good addition to this. That is so play point efficient, especially if you fuse one kind of her and then she also helps with hand present uh hand size controlling it's just it's it's such a smooth, a good smooth include into the deck oh by the way here i made a mistake i threw away heartbreaker instead i should have thrown a buller instead heartbreaker is a bet better card to play early on and since it's just a 3-1 rush and it could trade into three hit point followers but yes that's beside the point also play grasping on two because i was expecting it to be machina portal Makima Portal, it, they this way allows me to counter Robotic Reporter, but since they are not Makina Portal, it's not going to be as great since now she, Grasping Spider won't exactly be a very big follower. It's going to like reduce its own hit points by like quite a number, and well, it's not like no, it's going to be meta as much. Invoke Milnard here basically means her hand positive. Now since I can banish it using Nut, and it also means that. For throughout this entire game, I will definitely be hand positive. Every for every single Milnard you invoke, right, and every uh one of these U10 cards you can throw it back, it's basically plus one to your hand size. It's I don't see why people hate invoking Milnard early. Well, I guess you hate it once you have no cards left in your hand, but when you have this when you have still have quite a number, right, it's actually not that bad. Really, it's not. And here getting Nuts leader effect very strong very helpful as well and 
Sanguine Knight heals for 1, draws 2, puts us under 20. I could have gone for Revving Vampire here, and I think I should have. But I decided to go for uh, 1 Reminder instead. This is also 1 mana, draw 1, but Revving Vampire would be so much better here. This is basically minus 3 if I still have a Grasping Spider, but let's just assume I don't, so this is still a 1 mana, banish 2. How relevant is it? Who knows? But anyways, uh, you guys, if you guys weren't too busy listening to me talking, you realize they had two bell formats in hand. So this will influence my play a little bit in later, and uh, which when it happens, I will point it out. And I think it should be happening pretty soon, as you can see, all the useless cards get fused into Revic, a uh, vampire because of one mana banish too. And since they are storm bane follower, they can be very useful to use as trading tools or just cheat damage. Right, here we go. Not as not nothing more this time, although I could have searched for Milnuts using Vampire Liberated. Don't worry about it, it doesn't matter as much. But I guess here is where it influenced me a little bit. I decided to send this Milnut immediately out of fear of their Electo. The reason being right, I, although I do have Case Crack in hand, it just I send it early just because if I get two Milnuts, I can play it alongside Case Crack anyways. So might as well just send it out right now, just in case I get another one. Just get two Milnuts off the top somehow. And they didn't actually heal out my little range, which is like what 17? Especially with uh with Nux effect. Actually it's a little bit more because I have an evolved point. And just because of that, U10 can very easily take down uh even a control deck. You can just take down a control deck. And I think I you can expect U10 to be really really good going forward. I definitely got over 10 win rate with this. See you next time.